I, I we this is going to be a weird episode, I think, because uh, we kind of came into this. We were like, well, what topic are we going to cover? Usually we try and hit one topic and kind of really go in depth on it. Um, so then we were like, well, one topic might not be enough. So let's do two topics. And then we added in Q&A. And then on top of it, it's election night across America. So there is a whole bunch of stuff going on. Um, the Republicans have gotten shellacked. Um, across the country, which uh, I think gives you an idea of where the electorate is. Um, we can touch upon that a little bit, but um, do you have any initial thoughts about the election results or do, have you been following anything that's been going on right now? I have only slightly been following. I was trying to catch up because, yeah, I don't know. I For some reason, I forgot. Yesterday when we were talking about what to talk about tonight, I think... Mm -hmm. Like at like five o'clock history, you're like slow news week. And I wasn't even thinking, oh, well, there's like this election tomorrow night. And then all of a sudden yeah. I was, you know, reading up on our other subjects. And then it's like, oh, wait, there's like, oh, their polls are closing. <laughs> so yeah. I was quickly trying to read up on what's going on. So I'm, I'm a little behind a little. I have a few notes. But... Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I think that's the double edged sword of the fact that our podcast is so focused on California politics. Um, that sometimes we have blinders on and we're just like, what's going on in California? What's the news in California? And then we just kind of forget, like there's all these other things happening around the country. Um, we don't usually kind of veer into the national politics, but sometimes when it, we can tangentially relate it back to California and what's going on, we like to touch upon it, like presidential races and stuff like that. Um, some of the big news, uh, the Democrat won in Kentucky. He got reelected. Um, the probably the other big thing that a lot of people are really kind of fired up about is this issue one in Ohio has passed, which um, now makes abortion a part of the state constitution, which protects the right to an abortion. Um, so obviously, as a lot of people kind of fired up and I, I honestly think like because of that issue and because of that. I call it it's a proposition. It's it's an issue or whatever the heck they call it. Um, it probably drove a lot of people to the polls um, that were not Republicans, that were not conservatives, uh, simply for that one thing. And that's probably one part of what bolstered Democrats. And I think going into 2024, abortion is going to be something they hang their hat on. It's the one thing that when all else fails, they can always come back to abortion. It gets people to the polls. And Republicans as well. But yeah, uh, well, I was going to say it's funny because they often say Republicans are a one issue voter, which is the one issue is abortion. But right. it turns out they are too. I mean, they really show up for abortion rights. Yeah. It, well, it, it gets both sides really fired up. And, and understandably, it's a touchy subject and it's very emotional. Um, we're going to kind of do our best to segue from that into something else in a couple minutes. But, uh, I've, I'm of the belief, and I'll, I'll start off by saying this. I personally am a, a pro-life Catholic, um, but I also don't believe in me forcing my views on everybody else. I believe what I believe because that's my right to believe what I believe. I don't think I should force my beliefs on everybody else. I think Republicans got a little too emboldened by Roe v. Wade being overturned. And saw that as, well, now we can start issuing these blanket bans on all abortion in a lot of these states. And that drove a lot of people to the polls when in reality, I think Republicans probably should have taken the victory lap that they finally got Roe v. Wade overturned, returned it to the states and just let the states decide. So I think um, most pundits that I follow are saying abortion was the number one thing that drove people to the polls tonight. Uh, it's definitely going to be a thing in 2024. They're definitely going to make it a thing because, uh, especially tonight, if you're a Democrat tonight and you're watching what's going on nationally, after you saw this New York times poll that came out, that was absolutely devastating to Biden. And for those of you who don't know, there was a poll that came out from the New York times, which is, you know, not a favorable Republican leaning newspaper publication. Mm -hmm. That showed that if Trump and Biden face off, as of right now, Trump would basically wipe the floor with Biden, that all the swing states would go to Trump. Some of the swing states, he'd win by more than 10 points. 
basically that it would be a slaughter. He'd get more than 300 electoral votes. It would be a done deal. So a lot of people were freaking out that this is it. Biden is not the candidate. They can't have him. Um, so I think tonight, if you're a Democrat, gives you that glimmer of hope and, and something to grab onto and say, this is what our issue is going to be going into 2024 in, the, in its abortion. Does that change how people view Biden? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. But I think people still look at Biden as probably too old and um, incompetent. They look at the economy and that there's a lot of other issues when you're voting for president. So uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so I'm also pro-life. Um, and I know, like, we've obviously talked about this a lot off here and off the podcast. And um and I've told you, like, the, the one thing is, like, I view abortion as murder, but I realize that other people don't view it as the same because they don't believe, like, it's a fetus. It's not a human yet. It's like, like, and so I get that, like, if I'm trying to argue with someone over this, that they're like, it's not a human and therefore it's not murder. And I'm like, it's a human, therefore it's murder. And I, I think that's maybe, like, another reason why I'm a little emotional is I was, my first pregnancy, I was single. And I didn't, I never considered abortion. But it was like, it being, being a pregnant and single, I was young. It was, it was hard. It was, you know, being born and raised in a Christian conservative home in a church. It was embarrassing. It's, I won't get all into that, but like, so this, this is all kind of maybe extra emotional about it because I do view it as a life, but you're right that especially as Christians, Catholics, I'm not Catholic, but you know, we're both Christian, like the Bible, mm -hmm. the Bible gives free will. God gives free will. And like, right. yeah, we're supposed to like spread the word of God, but we can't force it down people's throats. And unfortunately that, you know, there is a moral issue and it's not like, we're not going to win any favors. We're not going to be like, being like, you are going to hell if you have an abortion and you know, but you're, you're not, no. that doesn't make you go to hell. But um, and so you're right that we can't, unfortunately, like force this on other people. I shouldn't say unfortunately, but we can't. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of things like, and that's another thing. And I won't even go so far to this, but I was talking to you about how I went through my libertarian phase like 15 years ago. But now I'm kind of like, maybe I do feel that way again, because I do believe in free will. And mm -hmm. we need some basic principles and morals and laws. But really the government needs to stay out of everything. And so I'm struggling now. I'm like struggling with where I stand with this. I know I'm pro-life for myself, for sure. Yeah. I don't, and I know that I don't want any, it's such a tough, tough subject. It's like, I don't want any woman to ever be in that position, but they are. Yeah. So. I, I guess this is part of like my, one of my, my libertarian ways of viewing this, this social issue is that if you kind of took both sides the far the, the the far left and the far right and you took them and the government out of it and just let the people kind of figure this solution or or this issue out on their own they wouldn't end up at one extreme polarity or the other and mm -hmm. i think most people would just kind of end up sort of in a reasonable middle now it may not be reasonable to a lot of people not everyone's going to be completely happy but it won't end up as one extreme or the other. And I think that's where most people lie. And I think you just have to let people figure that out. Let people choose that. Um, it's kind of like you and I don't agree with it or we're pro-life, but that doesn't mean I want to force somebody else to not be able to have that right or make that choice. So um, that's part of a part of my libertarian view on it is that if you let people decide and just get the far left and far right out of it, it will kind of settle and figure itself out. Um, and, and I don't think it'd be as extreme as people think, make it out to be. Um, which kind of leads me to the first topic we were going to talk about tonight. Um, also, oh, before I, I get to that, um, I did tweet something before we hopped on because I was watching all the election results. Um, I had tweeted out something, and this is something that just needs to be said, and I've said it before, but I, I need to say it again. 
Republicans are never going to make inroads or never going to do anything substantial until they learn how to start flipping voters in blue cities. I'm not saying you have to flip the entire blue city over to Republican, but you have to start chipping away at the city voters and urban voters. And a lot of people ask me, well, how can there be a Democrat governor in Kentucky when the state itself is so red, but you have a Democrat governor? Well, because a lot of these states are just jam-packed with the urban vote and city votes and high concentration of blue voters in these cities. Until you start chipping away at that, there, there's really no hope anymore. So Republicans have to get off this. this I, I don't know what it is. They just refuse to try and chip away at that. And I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying you have to flip it, but if you made it, if you got 40% of a lot of these cities, how different would California be if Republicans can pull 40% of city voters, of LA or, or San Diego, or hell, imagine if there's 40% of people in San Francisco were Republican voters. I mean, that would be enormous flips. Uh, I mean, most of California and state elected politicians, the big state seats, are elected by the three big cities. They're not elected by the Central Valley or Fresno or the Inland Empire or anything like that or the state of Jefferson. They're elected by big cities. And Republicans have to stop trying to scrounge for votes in these rural areas where they already have a comfortable lead and start going after the cities. Um, and to that point, this was actually pretty interesting. Uh, as soon as I tweeted that out, I saw something else that a libertarian, Lily Wu, actually won and defeated a Democrat to be mayor of Wichita, Kansas. So to me, that's that's whatever she did. I think you could probably take that and look at it and go, OK, well, what did she run on that she defeated a Democrat in a blue city in Kansas? So. Um, obviously, you know, I'm just saying the libertarians have figured out how to go after urban blue voters, but, um, Republicans still continue to sit on the sidelines and tweet stuff like about how legal marijuana is going to make everyone go crazy and jump off a bridge or something. Um, but that's a whole different subject. I, I, I don't understand boomer cons like that anyway. Who well, think? I don't understand because of several states already legalized it and I, that didn't happen. Yeah, it, I mean, California has had legal marijuana for, I don't know, almost 10 years at this point. And like, it's not like the whole state has gone into reefer madness, but yeah, I, 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 would, mean, yeah, the, I wouldn't use California as a quick size. The, yeah, the state is crazy on its own for many different reasons, but I don't think it's because of legal marijuana. That's for no, I think sure. it's for that. Yeah. Um, so I just want to point that out. 